Hello there friends, this is Dota News, we're here to create the best Dota News channel ever, here's what we cover in today's episode. Pro players discuss 7.35, Dream League Season 22 teams, new hero Bird Samurai is already in Dota, new Arcanas leaked, ESL 1 Kuala Lumpur finals recap and much more. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. Let's begin with a very funny interview with Sir Action Slacks, my favorite Dota personality who visited the OG Monkey business show. He told how he was listening to 9 hours of TeamSpeaks to find the best moments, and according to him, OG's TeamSpeak is the most interesting. I think he's very hilarious copying No Tail, but what he said there is really true, just watch some moments from the true side over here. That's the way. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I like it. Long have we waited? On it. On est sur sur les les nerfs. nerfs. On est sur les nerfs. On est sur les nerfs. Yes. Michael Boublé. <laughs> You can see how No-Tail turns his gang on, he's the real soul of the team. What do you think, should a captain be like the battery of the team or must he always be focused? Write your thoughts in the comments below. And next, I just can't help myself but to talk about this topic, this theme from Reddit, the Lion's Shard. So basically the whole Reddit is talking about Lion's Shard and how it's overpowered or is it just useless, I don't really understand because it's full of irony or maybe not irony. So what do you guys think, is Lion's Shard okay or not? Anyways, people are just having a laugh about it. And the other day in a pro game it was again shown to public, in the match between Team Liquid and BB Team Boxy on the second map got a shard and it was distracting everyone, because it was basically impossible to stop him from mana draining, he was sucking it all dry, and that was immediately outlined by the whole reddit. Boxy does it for the memes, Giga Chad Lion. I can't really tell if Boxy was really doing it for the memes or he was just really trying to suck all the mana from enemies, but anyways props to him. And Valve particularly didn't nerf the lion's shard, so we're gonna see mana sucking again. And now let's talk about pro players who told their opinions about the new patch. For example, BB teams carry Nightfall. I had 3 or 4 pubs in this patch maybe because we are playing in the official games and preparing for them. The patch didn't really change the gameplay itself, just added a lot of cool new heroes I guess. Anti-Mage could work, maybe Juggernaut, well we'll see. Hey guys, do you really think that Anti-Mage is a really good hero right now, do you agree with Nightfall? I honestly believe that we're still in the Spectrum meta, so let's see how it goes. Next, Saberlight expressed his thoughts about 7.35. Team Falcons are the worst team to play against in this patch, they opt Mars, they opt Timbersaw, they opt Razor, maybe Gaben realized that ATF only plays those heroes, we're out of luck. I mean, he's actually completely right, because these heroes are all the mains of ATF and they're buffed, so I guess we'll be seeing him winning a lot more. And also, for example, BB Team's save told his opinion about the patch, he's saying that it feels like you play the same patch, just other item builds and a little bit other heroes. And now let's move on to the fun part. You do realize how Valve likes to tease us with all the code lines and references, hidden references I mean, on posters, uh, phrases and all that. So data miners again found a reference to the new hero and I'm not talking about Ringmaster but Bird Samurai. First you can see the little eagle or some kind of bird on the poster for Frostivus. Also a new neutral item is Aviana's Feather and if I remember it correctly Aviana's is just like a name or a race of birds in Dota 2 lore. Also, data miners found secret items, for example, Ethereal Hammer made of Ultimate Orb and Meteor Hammer and Caster Rapier of Mystic Staff and Ultimate Orb. Neither the data miners nor us know what these things do, so we just wait for the official announcements and releases. By the way, when do you think Valve will drop the newest patch and the event and all that? And do you think Bird Samurai will be released alongside Ringmaster or he will be released afterwards? Write your thoughts in the comments below. 
And it all sounds cool that we have new teasers and references and leaks and all that, but listen to this. This year, 2023, was the only year in Dota 2 history when we didn't have a special game mode. Even 2012 had Grievelings and all that. Looks like Valve is done with the game. Or are they? Are they cooking something really big for us? What do you think, guys? I honestly think and I believe and something tells me that Valve are working on something really really cool and we'll just have to wait for it because like I think that they're now into the game and not esports since they dropped the DPC system and all that. By the way, remember we were talking about the streamer called Mason who got banned by Valve and he went to play League of Legends, so he also left League of Legends very quickly when he couldn't even beat the bots. Crazy man, crazy. What? I don't understand. Why are the bots so good? Alright, this game's dog -ish. I'm quitting this game. This game is so terrible. I know, Mason. I know. It's hard to play League of Legends because it doesn't have a voice chat. Or does it have? I don't really know. I have never played. And among other things, in the newest patch, data miners found interesting code lines related to Arcanas for Skywraith Mage and Vengeful Spirit. Yeah, and I'm here to remind you that Skywraith Mage and Vengeful Spirit were the main characters for the teaser of 7.33, The New Frontiers. And they both have feathers and the bird samurai leaks and all that, so I guess we're gonna get an event connected to Venge and Sky Mage. Also, we finally know the teams that have been invited to the Dream League Season 22. BB Team, Gaming Gladiators, Azure Ray and Team Liquid. They are basically automatically invited because of the EPT, ESL Pro Tour points. Dream League Season 22 will be held from the 25th of February to 10th of March. It's an online tournament that will be played with 16 teams, 12 of which will go to the tournament based on the results of open qualifiers. At stake, 1 million dollars and 18,000 EPT points. And the latter are more important if you want to go to Riyadh Masters with the biggest prize pool of all. I just hope that Team Spirit will be finally back in action. Well, lastly, an interesting strategy from T. Governor. He offered to pick Viper as position 5 support. He says that it's a hidden gem. Nether Toxin by level 8 and reduces attack speed by 60, that's a whole hyperstone, pushes waves and has a damage talent at level 15. Corrosive skin at max hero level gives Viper 46% of magic resistance. Viper Strike is a 6 second break with low cooldown, a high percentage of move slow and a nice cast point. I mean, that really sounds pretty cheesy. I would definitely try playing Viper as full support in my pubs. Teammates, please forgive me. And now we move on to the last day of ESL1 Kuala Lumpur. Falcons and Team Liquid met in the second stage of the lower bracket. Purely on paper the match looked very interesting and the teams have already met in the group stage where Liquid had no chance and gave away two maps. Perhaps Team Liquid have emphasized their past mistakes or just adapted to the patch faster and they were able to take revenge from their opponent. The first map started with a nice first blood for Saberlight which will probably help him not to fall out of the game because he's developing a not so pleasant matchup into a Naga. He would really hate to see it from the Liquid side how Naga can come out at 30 minutes with 6 slots. But even first blood doesn't save the situation on the lane and Naga comes out just gigantic. Liquid's Huskar takes the early Roshan and the Aegis, but they can't do anything with it because Naga is just farming too much. And in turn, Falcons find nice moves on cores and they take down Huskar a couple of times and it was really hard for him to get back into the game. Here you can see the fight on the second Roshan, where Liquid just decided to take not the most clear fight. And they lose Huskar, Visage and Muerta, as well as giving away the second Roshan. Yet, Liquid actually has the strength to defend the high ground. But then Mikkei makes a critical mistake of going down without a buyback and they gave up a 
side for that. Already at 37 minutes, Falcons had around 30k gold advantage, which is an incredible amount, as well as Naga, who already had the slot to finish the game. Well, and with such an advantage, Falcons had no problem to take a fight near the enemy high ground and finish the game. And I get the impression that Liquid are just weaker than their opponents in terms of skilling as well as drafts. They definitely needed to shake up and come up with something new to keep themselves in the tournament. And you know what they actually did? They put Lashrock on a carry against Viper. And with Nature's Prophet and Crystal Maiden, this strat was unrealistically strong. And it's like the teams just switched places. Falcons on the lanes just mercilessly fed their cores to Liquids. ATF just couldn't find his game at all, at 9 minutes he had 6 deaths. But even with such a bad start, Falcons were somehow able to gain net worth on cores and have a good fight on the bottom lane. And Falcons were pulling a comeback. They overfarmed 9k gold in their favor. But this was the game of missed opportunities and now Falcons give their all advantage away in just one fight. And if earlier it seems that the Falcons draft was quite easy to fight, then already when the Liquid player gained some items, Malrin and his friends weren't having a chance to win a fight, which they themselves were just starting over and over again. And just look at how strong Lashrock with the new items can be. That's crazy. Liquid just enters the high ground of Falcons and leaves no chance of survival to their opponents. They get the second Aegis, go to high ground again and end the game without leaving a chance for Falcons to make a comeback. And on the third map, Liquid were allowed to pick Lashrock again. Again. It's pretty weird that Falcons aren't afraid of him after the last map and didn't ban him. But okay, this time there was no domination and too much power on Lashrak. Until 20 minutes, the game consisted of teams either AFK farming or finding heroes on their own. The first full fledged fight Falcons took with Aegis on Wraith King near T2 Tower on mid lane at Liquid. But this time they're wiped by Lashrak and BS. And then Falcons players just fallen. Even realizing that they're much weaker than their opponents in terms of gold and slots, they do not give up hope and they try to find enemy cores, but they just can't succeed. In another vague attempt to catch Lashrak, the team gives away a rampage to Bloodseeker. It's not really clear what the opponents wanted from a Lashrak with the Bloodstone, but the plan clearly didn't go their way. And after all this chaos and pain, Liquid just go to the throne and finish the game. The last game day starts with a match for the finals between Liquid and Azure. In their clash with gaming gladiators, the Chinese team couldn't show a proper Dota. It looked like they didn't have the time to adapt to the patch. Most likely, the teams are better prepared this time, and they will be able to show us that they're in top 3 of this tournament for a reason. The map starts terribly for Azure. Nisha gets two enemies down. Liquid surprised everyone with the position 3 Venomancer. I guess the main plan was to harass. Ursa on the lane and stop him from snowballing. But it didn't really happen because the Chinese players just strangled Liquid's offlaner and Venomancer had like 4 deaths. And he was mercilessly tipped. As Zoray knows that Saberlight can easily rage and start making more mistakes, which can make the game easier for them. After laning, Radiant showed that they have prepared well for the match and looked stronger than Liquid. For example, Storm Spirit, having a really good start, just couldn't compete with the enemy Puck. The Chinese team had 7000 gold at 23 minutes, but it was not a big problem for Liquid and by finding good opportunities for the cores, they don't let the opponents get ahead. In the battle for Roshan, Liquid finally made it clear to Azur that the game will not be easy. The entire Dire team was just kiting Ursa and then just sent him to the tavern. Having taken the Aegis, the initiative in the map goes to Team Liquid. The Chinese team decided to attack MK with cheese, but Mickey reacts greatly. The fight prolongs, Nisha comes to help and makes a triple. Radiant loses two sides for this unlucky fight. The final fight takes place next to the Azure Tormentor, where Liquid catches the heroes without buybacks and finish this game. On the second map, the Chinese team surprised everyone with Bounty Hunter, but XM has no game at all. 
It's really important for Bounty Hunter to find enemy heroes and use his tracks, but Liquid managed to smother him. I would like to mention Nisha separately here, because he started the game with drops in FPS, and after a pause, he destroyed Bounty Hunter on the lane easily. This time, Team Liquid showed a much better early game than the last time, well, or the Azure carries decided to make the game harder for their team. This game was very intense, and at 15 minutes, teams once again decided to fight. And Everything started well for the Radiant team, but Ursa, who entered the battle under the Arcane Rune, tore everyone apart. After taking Aegis, Team Liquid decided to impose a fight. It started with a great arena from Saberlight, who got three heroes inside, but Void's Chronosphere changed everything. He got Invoker and Liquid supports. And in exchange for Primal Beast and Grimstroke, Azur takes six heroes from Team Dire. And all of this was under tracks by Bounty Hunter, so the advantage of Gold Gold for Liquid disappeared instantly. After that fight, the Chinese team became much stronger, and in the fight for the second Roshan, they had no problem sending all the heroes from Nisha's team to the tavern. They took the Aegis and Cheese. Team Liquid tried to impose fights first, but time after time they were just punished for it. So once again, Team Azor Ray started to gain advantage. And as is usually the case, the decisive fight is near the third Roshan, where Void with double damage takes five heroes. Radiant takes Roshan, takes Refresher, and Liquid has very little chance to win this map. The last fight of the game starts with an initiation into Ursa, and in an ultra-prolonged brawl, the Chinese team still managed to crush their opponents and take the first map for themselves. Everything will be decided on the third map. The third map was very even, the offlaners of both teams were just poor. Supports played very actively, constantly pulling on the sides. It turned out that the third and the first positions of Liquid were very poor. Here just props to supports of Azor Ray, who just strangled the whole map. And Luna was all this time free farming, and having received Aegis, the Chinese team already at 20 minutes decided to go on high ground and take the medal. Liquid could not oppose anything to the giant Lu, and he went without any problems to break the next side. Another great fight happened at 26th minute, where Liquid decided to attack Visage, but XXS proved to be survivable enough, and Luna did not leave a chance to the dire team. Razor and Timber were without buybacks, although they respawned quickly, this didn't prevent Luna from breaking their throne in a few seconds. This way, Azor Ray proceed to the finals and will meet gaming gladiators again. But before the finals, let's just remember this one small thing. Duraccio from GG decided to trash talk. Just before the grand final started, he called their opponents Azor Ray crap. Ooh, 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 that sounds like a challenge. Let's see how the Chinese legends respond. The first map of the finale started with GG picking Alchemist for Duraccio, who destroyed them on that hero in the last match. And they decided to take Broodmother for Ace, a pretty cheesy pick. Although the hero's win rate at pubs leaves much to be desired, the new Bloodthorn strat will probably bring the hero back to the meta. Just look for yourself. And it starts very hard for the Chinese team. Most of their initiations go in favor of GG. Gladiators take Roshan and we see how the new Bloodthorn works. Ace makes unrealistic damage to Roshan on the 18th minute. And with a 15k gold advantage, GG just goes up to the high ground of Azor Ray and breaks their two lanes. And it's all coming down to the fact that the gladiators were just head and shoulders above the Chinese team, and this match will just end 3-0 in favor of Duraccio and his friends. Azor Ray's last attempt to turn the game around came in the 27th minute, but it didn't really work out. Map 1, Gladiators win. The second map starts with the same scenario as the previous one, Quinn rolling his opponents around the map, helping turn passives for Slark. The only hope for the Azor Ray was Sinkyu, the player showed the game to which there were no questions. Thanks to his moves, the Chinese team managed not to fall out of the game so much. But when gaming Gladiators got an early Shiva for Primal Beast, it was over. The Chinese team just couldn't afford to take any fights. The new Shiva just is a really, really cool replacement for Vanguard for some offlaners because it gives you bonus, armor and HP regen. Yet so far we've only seen it on Timbersaw, Primal Beast and Centaur. 
Already at 20 minutes, Duracho and his team were just crushing the Chinese guys under tier 4 towers. The advantage was 12k. Another map lost by Azor Ray without any chance, the team shows no idea of Dota. Here, Celery just baits and his teammates just bury everyone under the ground. 26 minutes, the dire team comes to the enemy high ground and they demolish everyone. Thrown down. GG are one map short of $300,000. The third map doesn't start off in the best way for Gladiators because XM gets first blood and Quinn misses the first pack at mid. The game this time was shaping much better for the Chinese team than the past ones. This is basically due to the fact that Durachu was very badly beaten on the lane. And even though Underlord got a lot of form and he came incredibly overpowered, he couldn't make much of an impact on the game. It used to be that Gigi would pick heroes that had carry potential for ace if Anton had a bad lane and offlaner could make it up for it. But now his hero is very dependent on auras and whether or not his carry can fight without key items is hard for him to make his impact in fights. In the end, Underlord was just banked all over again and Zorei finally managed to get a map advantage. The Chinese team takes Roshan and the situation for Durachu and his team becomes very difficult. The gladiators seem to have relaxed and started to make mistakes very often, but Azur on the contrary came to their senses. After the next fight where Durachu was taken again, the score was 422. GG had absolutely nothing. Dire team had no trouble catching the heroes of Radiant and finished the game in 29 minutes. As the race showed that Gladiator's players can't relax and they have to fight back. Map number 4 starts with Luna being on free farm and we've already seen what happens when Lou is given free farm. Moreover, Azor Ray's draft looked stronger. It was basically a free game for Pock. Anyways, Quinn and his team imposed the tempo and didn't let Luna so easily farm. Already at 12 minutes they were crushing them under tier 2 towers. There was only one way this game could be thrown. By the GG's carry, which he actively tried to do. Even though Quinn and Ace paired dominated the entire map, Anton just didn't have his best game, which basically brought Azor Ray to victory. But while well, Radiant's carry was also caught a lot of times, which he absolutely shouldn't have done. The key fight takes place near the tier 2 tower of Azor Ray. Pangolier and Slark were taken down and also lost Aegis. Once again, Anton gets set up and lassoed. For this fight, the Chinese team regain all the advantage and are fully back in the game. And by the next fight, Luna had all the necessary items. So it was basically over. Previously, Azor Ray were just basically outnumbered because Lu was farming, and it was extremely hard for them. The key fight of this map takes place on the Gladiator's high ground. The Radiant catches dire heroes without buybacks and demolishes their side. And in the battle for the second Roshan, the point of this map is set. Azor Ray once again wins the fight, taking two heroes of the Gladiator's team without a buyback and ending the game. Who would have thought after the first two maps that Azor Ray would have something to counter their opponents and pick up two maps? It's really hard to tell if the Gladiators just relaxed too much or if the Azor Ray squad was just getting ready. Maybe even both. There are no specific questions to the Gladiators players, only Duracho just made some stupid mistakes much more often and the Chinese players on the other hand started to play much better and teamwork happened. And they became unpredictable. And if GG wanted to take this tournament, Anton needed to get his act together. The last map of the tournament didn't start in the best way for GG. Dire had quite a few strong laners and everyone took out their net worth. And basically Sinkyu did all to kite Duracho and to make him suffer. Sinkyu was just playing the game of his life. And while his Naga was farming the map, the carry of Team Gladiators was just left without the game. And gradually, the map goes into the hands of the Chinese players. Radiant decides to pick up Roshan at 21 minutes. GG got the Aegis and they will have a much better chance chance of getting back into the game with it. Near their tier 2 tower, where there is no chronosphere yet, the Chinese team decided to fight and the end of the Aegis for Pango. The dire players sent Ace and Quinn to the tavern, regaining their gold advantage. Naga, meanwhile, already has a lot of gold and is way ahead of opponent's carry on net worth. And she will be almost unbreakable given how much save was made for her. The Chinese team started to 
break the gladiator's side, but Durachu doesn't want to give up so easily. He places a very bad chronosphere. OD saves Lu, and GG players decide to keep fighting. Unfortunately for gladiators, Azur Ray sent five heroes of their team to tavern without losing any single one. Anton is just really not having a good game once again. Here he again places a bad chrono, setting up his own offlaner and mid laner. So here Azur Ray just complete their unrealistic comeback. They managed to take down the throne after all. In fact, the Chinese team showed some incredible morale. No one believed in their victory after they gave two maps away to the gladiators without any chance. But they still managed to fight back against Quen and his team. And they got their first tournament in the history of the org. Congratulations to Azor Ray on their victory. But well, hey Duracho, what about your trash talk? I guess Azor Ray are not crap, right? And just not that long after the match ended, Duracho himself posted a video saying that ESL asked players to trash talk before the match to raise interest. What an intriguing statement. Who else do you think ESL asked to do trash talks? Anyways, don't forget to share your thoughts about the last tournament of this year in the comments below. I believe that's all for today, thank you for watching, don't forget to leave your feedback in the comments below, because it's really important for me to improve by listening to you guys. Also hit that subscribe button to follow the best Dota 2 news channel. I'm not saying goodbye for a long time, see you soon.